It's officially Techtember and I always forget how crazy this month is. But I hope you guys are having a great start to your uh, school years, your normal work routines, all of that. Before we get into the crazy tech season, let's talk about simple, easy, but effective transitions that you can do with minimal time and effort. And I already showed you one, B-roll. B-roll is a form of transition, getting from one place to another. Uh, just made a, you know, a couple quick little cuts there. And bam, we're here in the office. You could also do a little bit more cinematic slow motion. I use little transitions like that as a way to tell story in a fast paced way. It keeps advancing the storyline with minimal time used or attention lost. I bought some more FPV drones because I like them so much. Okay, that leads us to the question of what actually constitutes a transition? And I think in very layman basic terms, you have two clips and it's whatever gets you from here to here. That's, that's a transition. And the question is why use transitions? And I think there's three reasons that I use them. Number one, they speed up your edit. So you're able to hold attention a little bit better and you can just let the viewer kind of imagine what happened from here to here. Number two, they advance your storyline. It's a great way to get from one place to another or from one scene to the next scene. Number three, probably pretty common, is to fix your mistake. <laughs> because you didn't film anything to get you from here to here, uh, because of your idiocy or laziness, <laughs> I'm talking about myself here, you can kind of cheat it and make it look like you put a lot of thought and effort <laughs> into that even though you're just fixing a mistake. And bonus, they just look really cool. I think we underestimate that sometimes. Sometimes just looking really cool is a great reason to do something. Another great transition is camera movement, like a whip pan, but first, coffee. Thanks guys. Do you know how long I've waited to be able to say that? I've always been, Jealous of Peter, in any video, at any time, he can be like, but first, coffee, and do this cool segment, and I didn't drink coffee, so I couldn't be a part of that. But now, now that I drink coffee, I get to say cool things like, but first, coffee. <sighs> Feels really good to be a part of the club. And there's a ton of different ways to do the camera movement transition. For example, I could just spin like... Peter? You here? You know what the best part is? That I didn't even have to teleport very far. Peter's just like across the street now. All is well in the world once more. And you can get creative with these. You can even just spin to a drone shot. The key here is to spin in the exact same direction. And then all you gotta do is take your two spin clips, cut in the middle of the spin, go to the next spin clip, Done, that's it, super easy. Uh, maybe add a dissolve if you need to, but that's it, super simple. I actually like the simple transitions more than the really big fancy ones. It's those like smooth, fluid, fancy, uh, um, finessing, finessing transitions, not the big like, whoa, that was a transition. I think those ones are usually better. And then there's also trendy transitions and then there's ones that just like always work, like a B-roll transition is always gonna work, whether it's trendy or not, it's always gonna work. A crazy spin transition might not always work. It's a little bit more gimmicky, you know. 
but they're still fun. They're still cool. Also, I was so close to crashing it on that stick over there, like so close. I'm gonna take out the ST and fly one more. <laughs> Nothing gets the heart going like that, Phoebe. Oh my god. <gasps> no crash. Now you understand why I bought a few extras. Next on the list is matching textures. Such an easy way to create a seamless transition to a completely different world. I could have literally gone from Canada to the Middle East, back to Canada, with one seamless transition. Water is another good one. The bubbles make it really easy to pretty much go to anything. Sorry, I hope that didn't scare you too much. By the way, all of this footage is from ArtGrid. If you need some of the most high quality and affordable stock footage, I have two free months for you right now. But why ArtGrid, you ask? For me, it's because it's never just one clip. It's always a minimum of three to a maximum of a hundreds from the same scene or location. So you can actually make stories, tell stories using the footage. And it's not just that random mishmash of random stock footage. And you get to use it anywhere, any way you want. Even if you stop your subscription, you can use that footage wherever you want. Hard to beat that. Thanks so much, Arcred, for sponsoring this video, and thanks for hooking everybody up with two free months with the link down below. And that leads me to the next one, which I really like, that is overlays. For example, on Arcred, we can just search film overlays. We can grab this little light leak and then place it in between your two clips, right where it's cutting. Usually I try to find like a really bright spot, for example, then change the blending mode to one that works and bam, done. These work especially well when two clips just don't kind of cut together very well. It's a little jarring. Throw on a little light leak and bam, just kind of hides the cut. This next one is very subtle and used all the time in filmmaking, and that is what I call subject movement. Literally, all I have to do is start a movement, move the camera and continue the movement to finish it off, and that is a seamless cut. And you can do this in all sorts of different ways. For example, I can start fixing my hat, move the camera over and, and do the exact same thing, and you never knew that I, I just spent I don't know, 20 minutes watching Peter's newest video on Barrow, so. That's a very seamless transition. Look, I, I just did it again. Very similar to that is a match cut. For example, I could toss up my hat, catch it, put it on, or just give it a punch and then you're in the next place. Match cuts are a really good way to transition you from one place to another, but they can also be much simpler. You can, for example, just do the same camera movement and just have your object in the same spot and those clips are gonna cut together very well. Is that a transition? Is that not a transition? I consider it a <laughs> transition because it's a really good way to get from one clip to the next very seamlessly. One of the things I haven't mentioned is transitions a lot of times make it a lot easier if you don't know what's gonna happen in the future. For example, the spin transition, you might not know where you're gonna be next, but all you have to do is just do the sp same spin movement and it's gonna connect no matter what. And so like if you were to film B-roll the transition, that might be really hard, but uh, spin to win, easy. Works every time. And it feels like you actually made an effort. You planned it. Zooms are a really great way to do a transition and it doesn't have to be that like crazy zoom transition. It could just be like a slow zoom and it just really ties one clip to the next. And one other thing that kind of pairs with any other transition or could be by itself is a sound transition. When you start playing a sound and you start hearing and it builds up and then you end up kind of seeing what was making that sound. It's a really great way to transition from one thing to the next, but you can also add sound on pretty much any of the transitions or just a normal cut to kind of emphasize that now there's a cut and it just really helps to sell the effect, I think. One of the key things here is if you're using a sound, you kind of want the cut to happen at the loudest point of the sound. That really helps sell it. Of course, it really helps too if it's actually purposeful. It's not just some like random sound, it has to fit whatever is happening in your shots. 
And really any of these transitions can be kind of combined. For example, when we did the camera movement, the spin, we also added a match cut, which was me uh, in frame, which made it just a little bit cooler, or maybe it made it worse, but, but it, you can mix and match these. Don't feel like you just have to do like one type always, for example, with the sounds. So yeah, now you know a bunch of transitions that you can try out, use them responsibly, don't go absolutely crazy on them all the time, just spin transitions. No, you wanna use these transitions when they work and to tell your story purposefully. Don't just throw them in super randomly. There's nothing worse than just throwing in a fancy transition and it just didn't fit your storyline at all. It's so jarring, so distracting, nothing could be worse. So use them responsibly, but it's really nice to know that there's a bunch of options for you. If you're like, I'm gonna do a travel vlog and then you're like, oh shoot, how do I get from this point? Well, you can use one of these transitions. It should help you. All right, I'll see you guys later.